All right, now we're talking about the new generation of Mexican food. The award-winning Beto and Son restaurant in Dallas was started by a father and son duo. They both have a passion for cooking. Beto, a pioneer in Mexican restaurants, and Julian bringing a fresh vibe to old school family cooking. So culinarily, I got started when I was 14. Um, I told my dad I wanted to be a chef. Uh, he said, absolutely not. I probably made it look too easy, but it's, it's hard work. Uh, and, it, and it's a lot of hours, you know, you kiss up your, your weekends or goodbye, your holidays. You know, you're always working. I never really actually encouraged him to be a chef. Don't do it because you want to impress me. I said, no, it's really what I want to do. He's like, I work hard as a chef, so you don't have to. You know, go be a doctor, go be a lawyer. And I was like, no, this is what I want to do, Dad. This is what I'm passionate about. And so he's like, gave me an apron. He's like, look, dish pits that way, you know? Let's see how bad you really want it. So what we're gonna do is make our Beto and Son tamale using our uh, tamale cake that we make with potato, masa corn, and actually some spices that kind of gives it that nice kind of orangish color. So first thing we're gonna do, we've made our cake. We're gonna actually add it to a uh, hot saute pan. We're gonna kinda kinda get seared up. So we want, wanna get a real nice kind of crispy sear on it. So we're gonna go for about three minutes on each side before we flip it again and do another three minutes. We've added some potato to it, and that's gonna kinda give it a nice light instead of being super dense like a masa cake and then also give it some crispiness uh, almost like a french fry. When we got together and saying okay how can we introduce different things that people you know still relatable it's something they understand. I guess the ideation process of it all was you know my dad grew up in, in Durango Mexico living that farm to table lifestyle and so I knew when it came to authenticity that was going to be easy you know I grew up with him making those authentic delicious sauces whether it be a mole or a tamale or you know, all of those delicious things that we know and love about interior Mexico. How we spun it in a way that people hadn't seen before, that was where we had to put a little more thought into it. This right here is a uh, corn husk, traditional for what you would use to make a uh, tamale. You put the maseca right in there and then stuff it, steam it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to top it and build it. I'm gonna take our, uh, our plate and we are going to top it with our carnitas. This is the pork shoulder that we have roasted overnight roasted for about 12 hours before we shredded it all up. So now that we've got our meat on there, what we're gonna do now is add our uh, green chili tomatillo sauce. We've got some serranos in here, tomatillo, cilantro, and that's just gonna go right along the top. Too much salsa is not enough salsa. I think when it came to Mexican food, what really excited me about doing Beto and Son was the idea of taking those delicious and beloved concepts and spitting it in a way that people were not familiar with, even though they were familiar with the flavors. Next, what we're gonna do is throw on our pico de gallo. So the pico adds a nice kind of freshness, brightness, makes you feel a little bit better. You know, Abuelita always said, eat your veggies. Um, so we're eating our veggies. We're gonna top it with our cumin lime crema. You've got some richness here, but it's really about the acidity from the crema. Next thing we're gonna do is gonna top it with our beautiful pickled onions. So this is gonna be a nice kind of pretty garnish, but also kind of cuts through some of that richness with that acid. So now we got those on there. The last thing we're gonna do is top it with two more key ingredients, some fresh cilantro, and queso fresco, just to, you know, brine it up even more. So now you have it, Beto and Son, stacked them all with abuelitas and my dad's roasted carnitas, as well as the green chili salsa. Texas was part of Mexico many, many, many years ago. The contributions of, you know, of the, or, you know, the Mexican people, the Latin people, you know, in this country has been tremendous. The the thing that I really take the most pride in is, is my heritage uh, and, and my family lineage. My grandmother, my abuelita, she was the one who came to the United States and brought my dad over, you know, as that kind of first generation Mexican Americans. And I got to see the pictures and hear the stories of how hard it how she had to work. I definitely take a lot of pride and, and seriousness in it. I don't take it lightly that, you know, what it took for my people, my culture, and my family to make the lifestyle that they have currently made in the United States and give me the opportunities that I have been blessed with today.